hallelujah all right so let's go into the word of god and today you know i've been the teachings i've been really praying about it and um you know i'm thinking i'm going to go this direction then i'm prepared and i find myself going this other direction citizen field maybe we should start <clears throat> so it's it, it's it's really blessed today it, it's really blessed because wow I, I just found myself going here then when i finished it brought me back here and it's just really really good just really really good we're going to start from the book of joshua of deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 then i'll come to joshua deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 one of the things i've always noticed with christians is this can i get some water my voice seems to be thinning out just give me water yes just give me water that's fine you know Praise God. <clears throat> and all of you watching from the other campuses, I know you are there. And we're grateful. All of you watching from Lekki Center, watching from Bagada, watching from all the Anthony Ikeja, Ikorodua, Limosho, Ike, um, Yaba, Abuja, Ibado. I know that you are all there. You know. So, um, what? Oh, yes. They're, they're on the screen. So, you can see that's Ibado right there. At least I can see from the auditorium, you know, some of the campuses. I don't know if their videos are not on yet. I know you are there praise god all right thank you praise god all right so one of the things you will have noticed about christians is this a lot of christians would normally at one point or the other experience some kind of stagnation and sometimes when i get all the prayer requests what i see is that i want i want prayers for this for advancement i want this it's a grandmother that is praying for a child or it's a grandmother praying for a grandchild or oh, it's a businessman that has done so well in business but is believing for another level in business or is a startup entrepreneur that is believing god for certain things or is a minister of the gospel that is believing for certain levels of advancement in ministry and one of the things that happen is that once you don't have the advancement you want then you can feel deeply frustrated and you begin to ask questions like where is god i thought god promised me a b c d but here am i i'm going nowhere so a lot of people have experienced stagnation in one way or the other it could be spiritual stagnation where you just find yourself not going forward spiritually it could be financial stagnation where your finances are just stuck you've done well at this 50 million dollar per annum but you can't just get to go beyond it it could be a business stagnation where the, the business is just stuck. It could be a project stagnation where there's something you're working on and you can't get it beyond. Determined to the one verse six gives us a very clear picture. He says, He said, The Lord our God said unto us in Horeb, what did God say? He says, You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. One of the things I wanted to establish, first of all, is this that stagnation would never be the will of God for you. Preparation is the will of God for you, but not stagnation. Either you experience stagnation as a person, or you're expressing it in ministry, or you're expressing it in your life. That's never the will of God for you. How do I know? The Bible says, everyone that appears in Zion, they shall go from strength to strength. He didn't say they shall go from failure to strength. He says from strength to strength. He said the path of the righteous in the book of Proverbs is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter to the close of the day. He said, though your beginning may be small, he said, your latter end shall be exceedingly great. So the question we want to ask is this, how come with all of this, and the reason why I'm saying so is this, I know the frustrations Christians face, and they begin to say things like, where is God? They say, because they're wondering that I'm 32 now, I'm 35 now, I should be married, where is God? I'm working on this business right now, I should have done my first 100 million, where is God? and some people feel extremely frustrated as a matter of fact some people backslide i've seen christians that will go to see which doctors because they have a challenge and they begin to say things like it's okay to see which doctor 
as far as I'm not doing, doing something against somebody else, I'm just trying to advance myself. And you wonder, what God do you believe in? And what Bible do you read? So as we begin, and the reason I'm saying so is that that's one level of stagnation. The level, the level of stagnation is this. When God begins to put dreams in your heart, and those dreams don't manifest. And one of the roots of this thing, as God began to show me, and this is your message today, many of you have been in this conference, this few days, the pastors have been here since Monday. This few days, God has put dreams in your heart. God has given you words concerning this year. But there's something that will hold you back. What is it? Your fear. And that's it. God has told you how you should do this new project, but your fear will hold you back. I remember last year when the Lord began to speak to me about NLP London. It was a very challenging thought because I didn't know if we had, I've never done a meeting of 10 before in London. I'm not a popular preacher that preached all over the UK. And I, I, I called my friends that were pastoring in the UK and I said, this is what the Lord is saying to me. And I said, well, it's a great idea, but bad timing. Is it because we're just, I mean, is it we're just literally out? Is it COVID is still here? Is it like Nigeria? And he gave me all those reports. And I took the report and I went to pray. And God says, that's why you should go now. The reason why I'm saying so is this. For you to break the power of stagnation, you must have courage and step out in faith. The word of God will not fulfill itself unto you. Step out. And some of you, there are dreams that God has put in your heart for a long time. And God is asking you today, it's your season to step out. I mean, just being here, it's a miracle. A month ago, we didn't think we'll be holding the meeting here. We thought we'll be holding the meeting in our church, in our lucky church. Then I went online, um, December the 1st, we had a huge crowd, a thousand people turned back in church. 31st of December, we had a huge crowd, about 2,000 people turned back, even though we had all these locations, we used about five overflows. Then what really got to me is this, I just went online one day and someone had done a documentary about bad experience in harvesters on Sunday because they can't get seats. And... I just began to think, then all of us, this is what the Holy Ghost does. Everybody, please watch this. When God wants to change your life, he begins to drop ideas in your heart. Those ideas does not come in the dramatic way. It's just simple things, ideas. And the Holy Ghost began to say, why not hold the meeting somewhere else? I said, nah, 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 hold the meeting somewhere, nah. Then one of my friends came to church and sat beside the lady when we announced the wine press first Sunday in January. And when he sat beside the lady, the lady looked and um, when I announced wine press, he said, Oh, I'm not coming. I know there will not be space. And he gave me that feedback and said, Oh, so people are not planning to come because there will not be space. Then I said, We should do this. Then I got the budget. The budget was, you know, just imagine the wine press budget was a slim budget, maybe 20, 30 million if you hold it inside the church. Then you have landmark budget that is a hundred and something million. And I said, this is not even our budget. But how did we get here right now? As we took one step of faith, God met us along the way. Until you step out, you will not see the glory of God. That's what I'm going to. Until you step out, you will not see the glory of God. He says, you've brought... So, the question is this. Why do people stay in their comfort zone? Because in the place of comfort, there is no fear. Some of you, you have to do something in Abuja. Some of you, you have to do something in Ghana. You have to open a store in the US. And you're just afraid of stepping out. And this is the problem with Christians. We come to church, there's a lot of prayers going on. We come to church, there's a lot of declarations going on. But listen to me. There is a word on your life. It's time to step out of the boat. And the basic thing that holds us is our fear. Fear is the enemy. Fear is the enemy. Job chapter 3. Job says the things I've feared has eventually come upon me. What does fear do? Fear limits potentials. There's a lot that God can do through you. There's a lot that God can do through you. But fear 
will limit your potential and many of you are here you are just one step away from a testimony if you can step out in faith but you've allowed your fear to hold you back and this this great guy is coming your way and it's time for you to fall in love again but you're afraid that maybe it will use you again there's another business opportunity to invest but because of the fear of failure and the fear of previous failure you're afraid to dive into this one because of the bad experience you've had in ministry you're afraid of just believing God for something else the question is this I need to write this down in your book where is fear holding me back you need to write it somewhere where is fear holding me back this is what the Bible says Hebrews chapter 2 Hebrews chapter 2 glory to God this is what fear does uh-huh the Bible says in verse 14 for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also likewise took part of the same that through that he may destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil see what he does the Bible says and deliver them through what come on deliver them through what where all what how did they become subject to bondage through fear can I have my rubber band? Chuma, will you come? This is what Satan does. And you can allow, you can also come, my brother. Stand over here. This guy has potentials. You can tell. Look at him. You can tell this there's, there's huge potentials here. And what does Satan do if you are, this is what you allow yourself? He puts fear around you. He mustn't go anywhere. Okay. God begins to call him. God says, step out into destiny. Go. You need to try. And this is how many of you are. You keep trying to go forward. But you don't realize that it's your fear that is pulling you backwards. Go. Go. Praise God. The question is this. Is this why your finances are struck? Because your faith is pulling you backwards. And you are here still praying and saying, Lord, I believe for this. Is this why your marriage is stuck? Because your faith is pulling you backwards. Is this why your, is this why your finances are stuck? Because your faith is pulling you backwards. There were things you wrote that last day you would do. Have you done them? The only reason someone says, this happened, that happened at the root of everything is fear that you have not dealt with and let me tell you something fear will hold you back from not fulfilling your destiny and you have to choose am i going to regret or i'm going to what explore everybody stayed in the boat but peter said bid me to come i will step on the water bid me to come i will step on the water thank you sir What does fear do to us? And what does fear do to us? So you'll find out you'll find that number one, that fear has the power to hold us back. So you'll see people that will say, God told me this, God told me that. So what have, why have you not done it? And I'm saying so because I'm a I'm a I'm a church boy. I was born in church. I know how we prophesy. A lot of people that prophesy do nothing about prophecy. They do nothing. Oh, Rabbi Shandala, Rabbi. God said, God said, God said, God said. You come back next year. God said, God said, God said. Listen to me. The word happens for those that do as God said. Because it's not the hearers of the word. It's the doers of the word. The question is this. What is God holding? What is God saying to you that you have to do something about? That's the question. 
maybe you want to write it down somewhere in what area is fear holding me back if i was not afraid what will i be doing based on revelation what will i be doing do you know there are people that are too, too scared to even believe god for healing too scared to believe god for a miracle they're too scared and the bible says that if you will believe you will see the glory of god somebody say hallelujah somebody say hallelujah the different kind of fear there's a fear of missing out it's called FOMO there's a fear of failure that if I do it I will fail there's a fear of even success itself that if I do very well here what will I become that was one of my biggest fear when I was called to the ministry you know a lot of people think that with the next level prayer i began to pray for the sick but that's not true i've been praying for the sick since in the 90s that was when i began to pray for this the first time i prayed for someone and the deaf ear open was about 94. but when i started the church i was just afraid that if i went on this standard of praying for the sick ah the church might grow so big that i will not be able to manage it so i said i will keep a lot to teaching and apart from that i thought that as a pastor this is something i never wanted to do have a church where people are looking for miracles and not looking for jesus so i thought if you do that you will easily gather a crowd become rich but you have people that are looking for miracles and not god and instead of me to think of how to balance it i shrunk back for my calling In what area is fear holding you back? What will you be doing today if you were not afraid? Where's my microphone? I wanted to travel. In what area is fear holding you back? What will you be doing today if you were not afraid? If you're not fear is holding you back somewhere area, just wave your hands and me say. Good. Just wave your hands and say, I want to call somebody. Maybe this brother over here with the glasses. Yeah, give him the microphone. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Yeah, in what area is fear holding you back? Um, my business. Tell me. Um, years back, <clears throat> I've always wanted to like have one of the biggest production companies in africa so a lot of stuff that people bring to me some some particular kind of jobs that people bring to me sometimes i shy away from it and that was that was a while ago so I, I used to shy away from it i'd be like oh i have someone that can do it so uh, so what kind of fear is this um the fear of success the fear of success so just imagine you are praying for success yes, sir. but you are afraid of success look at that because because sometimes this is my concern people will say things like god is not faithful but by the time you look at it you're not doing what you have to do to let the power to flow praise god can i get someone else on this side that wants to tell me what fear is holding you back from yeah, someone else. There's, yeah, there's a lady. There's a man over here on the third row. Yeah, give him the microphone. Yeah. If you're new to our church, this is how our church is anyway. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to be the reason why three countries no longer fight. Like a strong company that will hold a major economy of the most powerful country. That if there is a war here and there is a war here, if I tell this country I'm going to pull out my economy, my resources, or my investment. So what has stopped you? Fear, my problem. That I can't do it. It's not possible. So the question I want to ask you is this. Why does God give you a vision that you cannot do? 
And just to let you know, every vision that God gives you comes to the seed form. If you can take one step, it will get better. I already know that, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go on. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 14. I ask you to move there. Yeah, Joshua chapter 14. What is God saying to us in this conference? Break the power of fear. This is the year for the bold. This is the year for the bold. This is the year for the bold. So what do you need to break the power of fear? Courage. Courage. Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. Yeah, this is where it's going to get really hot. Verse 6. The Bible says this. <clears throat> the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephthah, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and, and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Verse 7. The Bible says, 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of God, sent me to Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. I brought him word as it was in my heart. Verse 8. He says, Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. They made them afraid. He said, But I wholly followed God. What does that mean? Faith follows God wholly, fear backs out on God. Can you begin to have actions that match up with your prayer? Anybody can pray. But it's time for you to begin to have actions that match with your prayer. Sometimes when I, some people pray at a 100% level. Their action is at a 10% level. The way the law of the spirit works is that your action must work with your prayer. He said faith without works is dead. Are you here, somebody? He said, I followed the Lord wholly. Continue, sir. He said, verse, verse 9 now. He says this, verse 9. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on where your feet are trodden shall be the inheritance, and the children's inheritance forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord. The next verse, verse 10, is a long reading. He says, And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said this 40 and 5 years ever since Moses ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness he said "Lo, I am now four scores and five continue sir and he says this as yet I am strong this day as I was in the days that Moses sent me as my strength was then so is my strength now for war to go out and to come in verse 12 he amakoba yagaba shalaba dagaba yagada gada are you seeing verse 12 my God, this is the best you need for your life. Joshua looked at I. Jo, listen, listen. Caleb looked at Joshua. He said, Joshua, don't give me the easy stuff. He said, Joshua, don't give me the regular stuff. He said, Joshua, give me this mountain. One of the things, listen, one of the things that will happen tonight is an impartation of courage. One of the things that will happen tonight is an impartation of courage. What does courage do? One of the things courage do for you that he breaks limiting thoughts. There are things you tell yourself, I, I can't raise the money, I can't do ministry, I can't grow the church, I can't grow the business. If I'm in Nigeria, I will not succeed. I cannot stop the addiction. I cannot stop the pornography. I can't pray in tongues. The Bible says, he said, keep me this mountain. allows you to see possibilities Ama, Palina, Sovali, Kapratosh. courage allows you to see possibilities I'm not saying that things are not tough I'm saying that you can see your way through the tough time You don't know how much you can do until you do what you can do. <laughs> you don't know how much you can do 
until you do what you can do you will not see what god can do until you do what you can do do what you can do and let god show up that is the raw power of faith faith is simple if god said it i'm crazy enough to believe it and to stand on it fear will not destroy your destiny sir this evening anywhere you're watching from receive the supernatural impartation of courage What does courage do to you? In the midst of opposition, courage makes you stronger. Ha. The Bible says that when the lion roared at Joshua, that all of a sudden the spirit of God, the opposition should scare him, the inflation should discourage him, but rather the courage made faith to rise up strong on the inside. As you return from this conference, the things you re- you have been running away from you begin to chase them receive capacity to dream bigger to see father in the name of jesus one thing you will notice about fearful people is this they settle easily they get somewhere and they settle they get somewhere else and they settle and they get someone else and they settle Micah chapter 2 verse 10 very powerful scripture he said don't settle here this is not your rest Micah chapter 2 verse 10 oh my high yeah, yeah. Micah chapter 2 verse 10 can we read together can we read together want to go arise and depart this is not your rest because it is polluted it shall destroy you even with it are you you listening god is saying that there are relationships you have settled into there are conditions you have settled into and god is telling that this is not your rest he say arise because it's polluted and it takes faith to arise many of you at the root of your stagnation is just one thing you have not mustered up the courage to do what you have to do. At the root of it, the grace is there, the power of the Spirit is there, but the courage isn't there. And until you do what you can do, you will never see God do what He can do until you do what you can do you will never see god do what he can do god says take the first step let me support you (sighs) why must you be courageous i was sharing with the pastors i said as soon as this runner was in boat right as soon as he broke the record for the hundred meters what happened other people began to break it many of you the reason why you must be courageous is this there are things that never happen in your family and generations that it takes a bold person to open it and once you open it you open it for your children for your brothers your sisters you open it for everybody someone say hallelujah Hallelujah. someone say hallelujah one of the powerful things about courage is this courage has a way to release heaven's resources you know what i'm saying this to you some of you god has heard your prayers you just need to step out in faith yeah some of you you just need to step out in faith courage is very powerful joshua chapter one Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. 
become verse 5. Aha. Uh -huh. Moses had died. Joshua had the promise of God. And see what God told Joshua in verse 5. What did he say? He said, Be strong and of good courage. He said, Why? Because you will face opposition. He said, Be strong as a businessman. He said, Be strong and of full courage. The next level has fresh demons, but be strong and of full courage. There will be challenges. He said, Be strong and of full courage. He said, We're not of them that turn back. No, sir. When it gets tough, we get tougher. When it gets tough, we get tougher. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith, our faith does not bow down. Our faith wins. The doctor says you have cancer. You smile. You say, Doctor, only one way this can end. I will swallow the cancer. Why? Because this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. He said, Whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. He said, This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Tell me what the testimony of the lady that had cancer. Her cancer was so bad, they told her to go home. She said, Why? He said, Because you're going to die. And she said, She's not going home. So they put her in a ward to prepare people for death. They stopped giving her drugs. They said, It's better for you to go home so I can spend the last days with your family. Because, and she was able to get her sister for me to pray with her sister. Oh, and we prayed. You know, when I saw her picture, I've never seen a most disgusting human face. The cancer was in her nose that came out of her face. It was in her nose. It came out of her face. So her face looked like there was a rock inside her face. And as I spoke to her, her sister said, she can hear you, but she cannot respond because she's almost gone. He said, but, I said, but can she use her fingers to respond? The reason why is that faith does not know how to give up, sir. As we prayed, the first thing was that she had lost her bread. Her breast had become flat. Her hair gone. The breast grew back. Her hair became back. The tumor shrunk. She sent me, she's, you know, I remember this because recently she sent me a picture and just said, I'm just thanking God for you, Pastor. And, you know, when you see her, and who was in the hospital, they do not look alike in any way. But it's faith. Just because we had had four marital issues, I don't even get married. Is that the talk of faith? Just because you have lost money twice, I don't know if I will succeed in business. Is that the talk of faith? Just because the doctor said you have your problem with fallopian tube, you said I will not have a child. Is that the talk of faith? The Bible says, "Whose report will you believe?" He says, "We will believe the report of the Lord." The question: What is the word of God saying about you? And that's why, no matter how much you pray, you must anchor your prayer on the word, because prayer can bring you good feeling, but the word will anchor you. Yes. Glory to God. Someone says, Pastor, the challenge is this. I'm struggling with fear. I'm struggling with fear of failure. The fear of not getting married. The fear that I will not succeed. You know what? What do you have to do? The way to solve fear is simple. Let me give you some methods. Number one, the way you solve fear is this. Stay away from See, stop feeding your fear. Stop feeding your fear. The Bible says, as soon as, as soon as Peter was looking at the water, he became afraid. The question is this. What are you looking at or hearing that's causing you to be afraid? I have friends that don't watch the news. I said, why don't you watch the news? I've not watched it for 20 years. He said, because if I watch it, something goes wrong with my finances. So, I look at the fear source and I cut it off. And news agencies are not designed to inform you that it's designed to make money by getting anything that will get your attention. So, when you keep reading about all of this divorce and how men are not faithful and how women are bad, how do you think we'll get married? What will happen is that eventually you'll begin to develop faith for that. Faith for divorce. Wait for widowhood. Wait for single fatherhood, single motherhood, baby mother. It will be to discuss things like that. 
because that's what you have faith for if you begin to read about how children are going a wire and forgetting their parents and all of those things as a grandmother or as a mother you begin to have faith for things like that the question is this what you see is what you become whatever you don't want you don't watch whatever you don't want you don't watch whatever you don't want you don't watch sometimes you must know the fact you need sorry the fact you need can destroy the faith you have whatever you don't want you don't watch didn't you hear what happened to mary when she was getting confused the angel said go and stay with your with, with your aunt elizabeth why instead of staying with other people that are not pregnant go and stay with someone carrying your future and learn to hang around people that have your kind of testimonies so the first thing is this to destroy fear touch the fear source What is feeding your fear? Newspapers, a friend, a relationship? Cut it off. The second thing is this. Ask your fear. Is this really true? The reason why is that your fear works on assumption. Is this really true? That if I have cancer, I will die? Is it true that everybody that has cancer dies? That's not true. Is it really true that if I stay in Nigeria, I will not succeed? That's not true. But your fear is working on is it really true that someone at my age i can't get married that's not true glory to god i said glory to god i said glory to god the question is this what is your fear holding you back today Because he's calling you to walk upon the water. He's calling you today to work upon the water. As a businessman, he's calling you to work upon the water. In your career, he's calling you to believe again. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without border. Some of you are in church speaking in tongues was so filled with fear there's no one step you can take forward you're afraid and god is saying perfect love cast it out fear another way to break your fear is this to continually meditate on the love of jesus and remind yourself that perfect love casted out fear when our son when our second son was young and it's right there. His speech had just challenges. And my wife became very concerned that, oh, his speech is sloppy. That is it not some kind of syndrome and some kind of this? And he, one day she finally told me, said that you always pray for other people. I hope you are praying for your son. He said, because of the way he's talking. He said, it's not smooth. It's not sharp. And I looked at her. I said, the Bible says, the Bible says, nothing shall cast their young. It says, nothing shall cast their young. There's a prophetic word they carry. I said, we will not need to pray because nothing shall cast their young. We, did, we just left it. And over time, everything just came back together just because there was something to stand on. You know, the problem is this. As you go into this year, is there a word to stand on? Some people are starting a connection. When there's a change in election right now, they get into trouble. But stand on something that will never fail. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Let's read and I'll begin to close. So one thing that God wants you to develop from this coming, because I, you know, this evening I really struggled because I thought I should go in another direction and God says, do you want to be a powerful speaker or you want to be a transformational speaker? Powerful means people say, he knows a lot. Transformational means that he changed my life. God tell, if you want to change their life, tell them to leave this place, empty their faith, fear, and pick up their courage. And I said, that is, I said, that's too simple a message for a conference like this. In a conference like this, I should be able to break down 
concept of soteriology or Christology in systematic procedures. But that will be good. And you will know a lot more. And you will be blessed for it because it's God's word. But if you want to see transformation, I believe you know a lot more. It's time for you to drop your fear and use your courage. There are many of you that are tired already. You're just coming to church. You're just hoping that, I hope this meeting will work. I hope this will work. You're already living your life based on the concept of hopelessness. It's just time. You need to believe again that you can get married. You need to believe again that you can find true love. You need to believe again that your business will succeed. You need to believe again that your life will have meaning. You need to believe again that God can use you. You need to believe again that you can break the power of addiction. You need to believe again that the project can come back. You need to believe again that your company can grow. You need to believe again that the visions God puts in your heart can really happen. You need to believe again that your autistic child, your child that has that sickness can be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the US, we had this lady, you know, seven years old, and the child had never spoken. And we prayed. And the child began to speak. In fact, they had to change the school because, you know, it was in some kind of special school. You know, the U.S. arrangement. And I said, it takes a lot for you to stay in seven years in the place of faith. Just believe it for the same thing. Many of you, there are offices you've stopped going to. There are marketings you've stopped, you've stopped doing. And God is asking you, go back to it again. Hallelujah. So what did, the, what, what did God say? Oh, wow. This is what God said here. He said, be strong and of good courage. So God is saying to Joshua, you want to take new territories? Verse 6. He said, be strong and of good courage. He says, he says why? He says, for unto this land shall thou divide an inheritance, which I shall swear unto thy fathers to give them. Verse 7 says, only be thou strong and very courageous is he want to take the land it says only be thou strong and very courageous your next level is just one step only be thou strong and very courageous hallelujah only be thou what strong and very courageous wow Thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. Wave your hands and speak in tongues one minute.